Fix the Cube, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Washington DC. This is the Cube, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Special presentation of Oracle Cloud World. Our next guest is Nirav Mehta, Vice President of Product Management Oracle. On the development side, around the cloud machine, the God box, or bo God service, <laughs> we're calling it. We used to call it God box. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you. So in, the, in the old days, if you had a killer box, it was called the God box, because <laughs> it took care of everything, and now you guys are doing it as a service, which got some great press. Wall Street Journal this morning had a story called Turning Cloud Computing Inside Out. That's Bringing it. that cloud into the data center. Why is that important? And and how hard is it to do? I mean, how hard is it to build the product? That's, that's, that's a great uh, opening there with Godbox. Really, you know, one of the things, John, when we started to design this product, what we challenged ourselves with is, at the end, we would have succeeded if it is invisible. Because what we're trying to do is not make a box, really bring the services that people already know and love in the cloud, and bring them exactly like they exist behind the firewall. So. So what is hard about it? Number one, on the technical side, is to have the same exact stack on premises and in the cloud. As you know, when you build cloud native infrastructure, there's uh, a different operational model. So to offer the exact same stack on premises takes a lot of work, and behind that simplicity and, ele and elegance, a lot of sophistication. So very proud that, that the team and delivered And this is important it. because if you have two different stacks, you have different code bases, it's like having different repos on GitHub if you're a developer, right? Yeah. You got to understand that you got to roll code, do updates, things like data management, all, it gets really complicated, right? So to manage. Indeed, indeed, and, and think about this, John. Uh, when we take longer to build innovation for our customers, right, they, they don't quite see the speed, the agility of innovation. Yeah. Now that we have the same code path, as soon as we innovate in the cloud, we can bring it to our on-premises customers. So Dave brought up a, a point earlier with yeah. Sean Price, he said that Back in the day, go back five, six years ago, people said ERP would never go to the cloud. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were, this was the dogma of the industry. Yeah. I'm not going to put production workloads in the cloud. So, we've seen some production workloads go in the cloud, not a lot of ERP, maybe mm -hmm. some test cases, but now you're bringing ERP in the cloud on premise with the, with the cloud machine. Yeah. Is that a market dynamic, or is that more of a compliance issue, or both? You know, um, the way I look at it, in terms of the journey of the production workload to the cloud, it starts with integration. And so you heard this morning in uh, Thomas's keynote, the ease with which Oracle can enable you to extend your on-premises ERP and leverage the in the cloud assets. So you start integrating and then you start to migrate over. So that's one. And, and, and second, uh, you know, what's really constraining organizations is things like latency and the need for really high performance. Right, so by having this guard box, as we call it, right, we're, we're taking away some of the challenges of traversing the internet and the latency challenge. All right, so I'm going to bring up a couple things. So yeah. I like, first of all, latency and speed, totally performance, right on the money. That's table stakes, you've got to sure. meet that. The big buzzword and the big effort right now is orchestration. You're hearing about Kubernetes, Docker, right. real facilitating a lot of orchestration of services while maintaining the high performance and low latency. Right, so that's the real critical thing. So with that in mind, you would agree with that, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, so with that in mind, talk about the notion of integration because now integration becomes the complexity. Mm -hmm. So integration becomes harder. What is Oracle doing to make integration easier and mm -hmm. how is that a competitive advantage? Yeah, and I think there's, uh, you know, let me talk to orchestration, it's an important point. Orchestration should be uh, only done when it's necessary. Quite often what we see is vendors so far in the solutions they've delivered, they're using orchestration to plug the discrepancy between the two environments. <laughs> and really, you, you want to orchestrate when you absolutely need to. But how nice would it be if uh, test and production environments can be swapped very quickly, right? If the workload mobility simply happens without a ton of reconfiguration. So orchestration plays a pivotal role, but Oracle believes that it, is, it should not be a band-aid. It should be there to make you faster, more agile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a plug a hole. Yeah. It actually makes them go faster. Dave, go ahead. Exactly. I wonder if we could talk about when you were designing the Oracle Cloud Machine, um, a lot of what you had to think about, presumably, was the tooling to manage 
that system. So you're yes. trying to create an environment or experience that's identical on-prem, off-prem, doesn't matter where it is. How much of that tooling was invention required mm -hmm. versus just sort of pointing your cloud tooling toward the on-prem? That's, that's great, Dave. Uh, you know, I think 80% uh, of it is really us having learned from our experience operating a very large public cloud. So we brought a lot of the tooling, but, as, but also the processes for how to maintain availability, performance, and all that to the on-premises cloud. Mm -hmm. But as you know, there are unique considerations uh, with enterprise IT for security. By the way, I've, I was a security um, uh, product executive uh, for 10 years prior to this. And, and a lot of the unique challenges that come out of uh, you know, bringing in an external operations layer into your data center, we had to tackle those. And, and we did that comprehensively in the way that Oracle does, enterprise class with all the, the right security safeguards, uh, the regulatory frameworks that need to be in place, et cetera. So I'm, I'm glad you brought the point that you're, you know security, because every time I talk to a security expert, I learn a lot. So my understanding is when, when people talked about cloud security, it wasn't so much that the security in the cloud was bad. Mm -hmm. It's not like Amazon is bad security, it's just that it's one, one size fits all. And the enterprise wants N different you know, right. configurations and so forth. So how do you accommodate that need for customization, if you will, for that enterprise, and the need to scale. Right, now that's a great great point, and, and I have noticed, you know, in the public cloud, there is an element of transparency, uh, there's an element of trust that goes along with security, but you don't have all the control uh -huh. that you seek as an enterprise. So, so how we went about building our Oracle Cloud machine is really building on the experience we had with Axadata, Axologic, and, and so many of our um, hardcore uh, IT uh, hardware that mm. we've been delivering in these data centers for mission critical workloads, and made sure, for example, that we harden our operating systems, that we ensure that our staff that accesses these uh, infrastructure elements are using strong authentication, that there are solid audit trails you can really see everything that they're doing. And uh, we're very aware of what the IT security team really needs. And uh, getting aligned with that was a key goal of the product managers. So I got to ask you about the, um, the inside out cloud machine behind the firewall question. So does this mean the end of the DMZ? Because the DMZ, Dimitri Zone, was a halfway house between intranets, extranets. That was the security right. safe zone. You know, Th that, does it yeah. go away now, right? I mean, or how do you manage? Firewalls are complicated. Well, let me tell you, uh, John, the, the DMZ was gone five years ago, <laughs> right? So for the longest time, the perimeter has been around the data and no longer around a specific point in the network, right? I mean, where the yeah. information is, is where you want to form the perimeter. So now you take Oracle Cloud, and you visually you know, stretch its edge and bring it right to the enterprise data centers. The perimeter is wherever the data is. And what you heard today from Thomas, you know, the way we are doing tr transparent data encryption, uh, encryption in the silicon, all the operation security, yeah. you, know, you need that. You need security at every layer. I to, buy that 100%. Yeah. The thing that you guys, um, I think are doing well on, I want to ask you your take on it, but what others are struggling with is insider threat. Yes. That's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I can encrypt it end to end. Yeah. Okay, but I'm insider, I can see the database. Yes. So is that a big point of contention for you guys? Are you guys doing anything there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, we can get into details another time, but, but if you really look at our processes for what drives our uh, operations team and how we vet them, how we ensure that if they leave, uh, we scrub all their access controls okay. and, and all the strong authentication they need. Okay, we got to wrap up together. here. We do want to follow. I want to follow up on that yeah. whole uh, insider threat security paradigm. It's really relevant, and I agree. There's no perimeter, so I want to get, and, and that's really what everyone wants. Exactly. I'll give you the final word for the segment. What is the uh, thing that you'd like to say to people watching, potential customers or customers, about what, why Oracle's cloud machine is relevant and and, and important? Thank you. Yes, you know, uh, I'll, I'll say this this way. So far, the IT industry has failed to deliver a solution for this problem. Uh, mainly because they have ignored uh, the fact that the pricing has to be that simple, exactly like the public cloud. And Oracle has solved that. 
It's always a subscription. You don't buy hardware, software from different vendors. And, and second, that is the same stack on both sides, which allows you to have seamless workload uh, portability. No other vendor in the world has delivered this. So, so look at us seriously. All right, we're going to wrap it up, end the CUBE segment right there. Thanks so much. This is the CUBE live in DC. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.